Hello, Crossroads Church and anyone else who may be listening to this. My name is Keegan, coming to you with the daily devotion for Saturday. And Crossroads is continuing its sermon series of living with purpose. And this last Sunday, the message was on numbering, talking about numbering our days and understanding how our life here is short. So the first reading comes from Psalm 90, chapters, or Psalm chapter 90, verses 10 through 12. The length of our days is 70 years or 80, if we have the strength, yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger, for your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So we learn from this passage right away that God wants us to have a healthy fear of him, to live with a healthy fear of him meaning have a sense of reverence and respect for him in all we do. And we also learn that um, we ought to live our days wisely while we're here, understanding that it's short and we should live each and every day wisely. The second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. And it says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So what we see here now uh, can, can leave you hopeless oftentimes. We see addiction, broken families, broken relationships or divorce. We see poverty, we see greed, we see abuse. There's so much things to be sorrowful. So, we see so much sorrow in life. Psalms just talked about that as well. Um, and if we don't turn to Jesus and for his healing and redemption in our lives, uh, it, it will leave us hopeless. We have nothing uh, to have hope for and nothing to look forward to because it's all just here and now. We're focused on all the sorrow and we need Christ's healing. On the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, what we see here now could be quote unquote good things, if you will. Uh, the beauty of God's creation, traveling the world um, and doing everything you could ever dream of on your bucket list. Um, nothing is inherently wrong with that, I would say. Um, but as the wisest and richest man to ever live on the earth said, King Solomon, he said, it's all meaningless. And you're simply just chasing after the wind. Um, it all fades away. So how do we make our short time here on earth matter, right? We're talking about living with purpose in this sermon series. So how do we live with purpose bi biblically? What are, uh, I kind of broke this devotion down into three uh, points, if you will. The first is the greatest commandment. God says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So to sum that up, we're, we're called to love God and love others, to serve God and serve others. And how do we love God? Well, there's many ways we can love God well. Um, just to name a few would be obeying him, keeping his commandments, and position yourself under the waterfall of his grace when we do miss the mark or sin. We also want to glorify him in all we do. That's how we love God, some of the ways. Also, how do we love others? Some of the ways we do that is witnessing to them, so telling them about the good news of Jesus. The only thing we can't do in heaven is tell others about Christ that didn't know him. That's the only thing that we can't do in heaven. In heaven, we'll have eternity to worship God, to spend time with other believers in fellowship, um, to experience his love and goodness and talk to him. We won't have to use prayer anymore, but we can talk to him directly. We can do all that in heaven, but we can't witness to others. So that's one way we love others is to tell them about the good news of Jesus and the gospel. Another way is to be Jesus' hands and feet. So come alongside others, put their interests and needs before your own. The second point is how do we make our short time here on earth matter? How do we live wisely? Um, is the great commission, what God sends us all out to do as Christians once we come to know him and come to a faith relationship uh, with him. And um, so the great commission, it's therefore God commissions us to all, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
So when you when you hear that, I think oftentimes we can have this misconception as Christians, like, oh, that's for people in the ministry. Those are that's for preachers or missionaries. They're supposed to go and make disciples and baptize people. And of course, yeah, that is their role. That is their calling. But we're all called to live out this great commission as Christians, and it can look many, many different ways. Discipling can look as hosting a small group, having people over to your home, and leading a Bible study. It can also look even not in the church sphere realm at all. It can look as coach and mentoring people at work and discipling that way. So we don't want to get confused with thinking that the Great Commission is just for people in ministry, but it's for each and every one of us. And discipling others can all look different ways in the way God has wired us with our different spiritual gifts. The last is balance, to have balance between taking up our own cross daily and also in serving him, but also just enjoying the blessings that he gives us in life. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 8 says, however many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them all. So I think it's important to have a healthy balance in life and also enjoy God here and now um, and his goodness um, it, it shouldn't be some guilt thing if you've worked hard and saved your money and you want to take your family on a nice vacation. Um, I don't think you should feel guilt about that. Um, however, if you are, I, th I think as Christians, we can kind of do that sometimes like, oh, we're, we're not called to have nice things or do fun things because we're called to serve God and take up our own cross daily. And um, we shouldn't feel this guilt about enjoying life. And if you are feel guilt about it and have this conviction, maybe it isn't God's will for you to take your family on that vacation and you should pray about it and be at peace with the choice you're making. Uh, but I wanted to put that as the last point, is to have this healthy balance and to understand that we're also called to enjoy our days in life here as Ecclesiastes reminds us. So God bless and have a great weekend.